Hi everyone, let's learn vectors. Suppose you have studied three hours of biology and two hours of chemistry. Now if I ask you what is the total time you have studied, the answer would be five hours, right? Simple math, three plus two equal to five. Now let's take another example. Suppose this block, the pink block, is being pushed by two persons with equal value of forces, five Newton, but in different directions. Now, if I ask you what is the total force acting on this particular block, what will be the answer? It looks like 10 Newton, right? But the answer is not 10 Newton. Why it is so? In the previous example, the time was 3 plus 2 equal to 5, simple addition. But here, when I add 5 plus 5, it is not, if I add 5 plus 5, I get 10, but 10 is not the answer. The rule of addition seems not consistent in the both the examples. Why it is so? You see, the physical quantities like time, force and other physical quantities can be divided into two categories, scalar quantity and vector quantity. What's a scalar quantity? Scalar quantity is a quantity which can be expressed with the help of magnitude only. What is magnitude? Magnitude is magnitude gives how large or how small the quantity is. For example, 1 kg, 5 R, 100 joule, these are the magnitudes. What are the examples of scalar quantity? Mass, time, distance, speed, energy, power, etc. are the examples of scalar quantity. Now, the rule of addition, rule of subtraction and rule of multiplication are simple and ordinary in case of scalar quantities. That's why since time is a scalar quantity, in the first example we have seen 3 plus 2 was four, equal to 5. But when we come to vector quantity, what's a vector quantity? Vector quantity is something which require magnitude as well as direction in order to express them. Now what are the examples of vector quantities? Displacement, ve velocity, momentum, force, torque, angular momentum, these are vector quantities. Now direction factor in case of vector quantities play a very important role and because of this direction factor the rule of addition, subtraction and multiplication all are a bit different from scalar quantities. We will see only addition and subtraction here in this video. But before that let's learn few facts about vectors. Vectors are geometrically represented by an arrow. The length of the arrow gives the magnitude of the vector and direction of the arrow of course will give the direction of the vector. Magnitude of a vector is always a positive number. Two vectors let's say A and B are said to be equal if their directions are same and magnitudes are equal. Now let's go to the addition of vectors. Suppose I have two vectors that say A and B and I want to add A with B. So I will draw this A and B in such a way that the initial point of A falls on the final point of sorry initial point of B falls on the final point of A and I can identify the angle between the vectors. Angle between the vectors play a very important role in vector addition, vector subtraction and vector multiplication. Angle between the vectors is nothing but the angle between the direction, angle between the directions of vectors. Now, when I add A with B, this A plus B will give me a new vector, means A plus B itself is a vector. Let's say that vector is R, which can be identified by joining the initial point to the final point of B. We call R as a resultant vector of addition. R, which is A plus B, is a vector. Therefore, it will have two parts, magnitude and direction. The magnitude of R can be written like this, which is derived with the help of law of parallelogram using this figure. So I have simply written on this formula. And direction of R can be specified with the help of the adjacent angle alpha and tan of alpha 
is this one which also can be written with the help of this figure only now look closer to the value of r the value of r depends on a b and theta now depending upon the value of theta the value of r can be different right so here in this video i will discuss three different cases of angle standard cases rather and corresponding values of r let's start suppose two vectors let's say a and b are acting along same direction which means the angle between them will be theta uh, sorry zero and this particular relation will turn into r equal to a plus b so r will follow simple scalar addition rule a plus b and this is in fact the maximum possible value of r let's understand this particular condition with an example Suppose this block is being pushed by two forces which are acting along same direction. Force is vector quantity. So since forces are acting along same direction, both the forces, angle between them will be zero and resultant force acting on this particular block will be simply F1 plus F2 in this case, which is 10 Newton. So we see that it will be 10 Newton only if both the forces acting along same direction. Let's move to the next condition. Suppose two vectors, let's say A and B are acting perpendicular to each other, meaning angle between them is 90 degree. Now, once I put 90 degree here in place of theta, the relation will turn into like this, R equal to square root of S, S square plus B square. Now, let's understand this particular condition as well with example. This block is being pushed by two forces which are perpendicular to each other, meaning angle between them is 90 degree. Therefore, resultant force acting on this particular block will be square root of F1 square plus F2 square. Putting the respective values of F1 and F2, I get 5 square root of 2 Newton. We will understand this particular condition with another example. So here in this example, I have two current carrying conductors, two current carrying circular conductors who, and their radius are same R. They carry current twice I and I respectively. And we have to find the magnetic induction vector at the center of this particular coils. Now this question belongs to magnetism chapter and we are not discussing magnetism chapter, but there's a vector as aspect of this particular question without which the question cannot be solved and we will look into the vector aspect only. Nonetheless, we should know that every current carrying conductor produces magnetic field and magnetic field can be measured by something called magnetic induction vector. Therefore, both the coils will produce magnetic field and the magnetic induction vector at the center will be B1 due to first coil and B2 due to second coil. Although I have written their values, but this is not the point of discussion here. Now at the center two vectors B1 and B2 are acting and B1 and B2 are perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the resultant vector, magnetic induction vector rather, is square root of B1 square plus B2 square. I must mention the direction of B1 and direction of B2 here, it is identified with the help of right hand thumb rule which we learned in magnetism chapter. Now let's go to the next condition of theta. If two vectors are 180 degree opposite to each other, meaning if two vectors are acting opposite to each other then angle between them will be 180 and once we put 180 here in the, in the place of theta then resultant vector of addition becomes a minus b. Although it is addition, but finally we get a minus b and this is the minimum possible value of r. We will understand this with the example. So the block is pushed by two forces, f1 and f2. So two forces are opposite to each other, which means the angle between them is 180 degree and hence the net force is zero. So this is all about vectors, addition of vectors. 
Now let's go to subtraction of vectors. Subtraction of vector is nothing but addition of negative vector with another vector. Let's understand this particular statement with a bit clarity. What do you mean by negative vector? Suppose I want to find negative vector of B. Then negative vector of B is nothing but the but a vector whose magnitude is same as that of B but the direction is opposite to that of B. So this is minus B. Now when I add A with minus B I will get A minus B and A minus B itself is a vector. We call it resultant vector of subtraction. Let's say that vector is S. So since S is a vector it will have two parts magnitude and direction. Magnitude I have written here which also can be derived with the help of law of parallelogram with the same figure. So again it depends on angle between the vectors theta. So I have written down three standard values of theta and corresponding results of S. I have only this much in this video. See you next time. Thank you.